There we go. We're live. Excellent. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I think that Theo provided a, a really good breakdown of the non-monetary uh, proposition of, of proof-of-work networks. So I just wanted to kind of delve into some of the actual real-world use cases of, of proof-of-work networks. So I just wanted to kind of get everyone's sense here. What is your what is the most promising use case that you think for building on top of Bitcoin or other proof-of-work networks? We can start with, with whoever. Verifying zero-knowledge proofs, right? Yeah. And or generally ordering things, right? Um, but specifically with zero-knowledge proofs, like you can order a series of proofs that prove like gradual or like incremental like state transitions. Mm -hmm. So if I prove the state goes from A to B in one proof, then in my next proof, I'm going to prove that it goes from B to C. And then the proof of work network can like establish a canonical chain that like links all of those proofs together. Mm -hmm. So we can like have any application really like be ordered and secured by Bitcoin without Bitcoin having to like know about what that application is. Mm -hmm. So I think CKPs are really cool for, for proof of work chains. Yeah. Anyone else? So your question was specifically about why proof-of-work networks are good for storing this sort of data. Yeah, any kind of utility, really, that best cool. use cases. The advantage in proof-of-work, or s the disadvantages some people present it, is that you actually have a, an, a, you know, an expense. You consume electricity for the purpose of generating new blocks. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put in there requires more effort and therefore is deemed as more valuable. Mm -hmm. And I know this is the Marxist, what's it called, the labor theory, labor value theory, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't always make sense, but if there's a market for it, it makes a lot more sense than something which is proof of stake and the blocks are generated by virtue of just a bunch of people locking their coins and running Raspberry Pis. <laughs> So uh, Carter, I, I know that uh, QED has developed a lot of scaling solutions for Bitcoin and also on Doge now. Yeah. Can you kind of walk through what made you decide to expand support for Doge and why that's important? Well, okay, so um, first of all, I came from the proof of stake world. Uh, I can attest that we weren't running our nodes on Raspberry Pis, but uh, <laughs> some exchanges sometimes would run nodes that were on similar type devices, like a 2V CPU AWS instance. But um, yeah, so like I think Doge is particularly very interesting just because Litecoin secures it, or Litecoin and a range of other chains that can be used with Uxpo, but primarily Litecoin. And Litecoin is one of the few remaining secure blockchains along with Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, I saw all the pitfalls of the proof of stake chains. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm convinced that Litecoin and Bitcoin are the sort of two remaining bastions of, of hope that uh, can save us from just all becoming POS. And uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to work on Dogecoin and Bitcoin. Yeah, and what about the consortium that you guys have developed? Can you talk more about that and what you're doing there? Sure. So um, basically, one of the great things that proof of work chains can do is just ordering things. So we have L2O consortium, which is just standards for like ZKP ordinals. Um, and essentially what the ordinals indexer does is it verifies like a sequence of proofs and verifies them against a predefined like verifier key that anyone can deploy. So I can deploy an L2 application, and then I can post proofs that show like the state, the uh, like uh, the state legally changing from one state root to another. Um, and yeah, it's just like a very easy way to make verifiable applications that are essentially sequenced and verified on Bitcoin. Um, like L2O itself doesn't give you a trustless bridge, though, of course, because you know we don't have recursive covenants on Bitcoin. Um, but you can, in the same way that ordinals are secured and guaranteed by Bitcoin, um, you can build other applications that that are you know have those same security properties. In that, like you can know the exact state of the application by playing the blocks back from Genesis mm -hmm. while running the the ordinals indexer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, uh, Theo, I, I know I know you talked about the uh, you know. The, the people who are into Bitcoin for the ideological reasons are already there. Yeah. Um, what role do you think ordinals will have to play, or, or any kind of uh, uh, you know NFTs on Bitcoin to actually attract more use uh, usability? I think it definitely attracts people. It already attracted a lot of people uh, from other chains, mm -hmm. like Ethereum, for example, or other ones, because it's. I think that uh, 
artists and creators, um, they're less ideological. They'll just go where liquidity is. And so they'll say, hey, if ordinals is a hot thing, let me try to use that. And then they're going to be using Bitcoin. And maybe they get infected by some ideological, you know, rubs off on them that it mm. doesn't, maybe didn't exist in the ecosystems um, where they already existed. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really cool. And I also have been using Doge since uh, something called Doge Party, which is counterparty on Doge. And uh, it exists since 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been doing weird tokens and weird experimental NFTs there. But I think that, uh, yeah, I think Ordinals definitely and Counterparty definitely have attracted different people to the ecosystem. Yeah. Anyone else want to add anything about, about, about the growth through NFTs? Anything else? Mm, I can say that um, in my perspective, um, NFTs, Ordinals, Doginals, whatever, um, in the current protocol on Bitcoin or Dogecoin, it damage. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you want to use as a currency and um, the use case is for ordinals or doginals, it um, makes um, the fees go up mm -hmm. and um, the size of the blockchain grows uh, exponentially. We see, for example, f since last year, it uh, grow up uh, in size almost double. Um, so in, in current protocol, I don't see any uh, real utility and use case uh, because it destroys the creation. Of course, initially in 2013 was a joke, but we actually want to create a currency, mm -hmm. and for that to happen, um, do doginals or ordinals is not the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Theo, I, I know uh, you've been writing about NFTs now for a long time, like mm -hmm. before NFT was actually a thing in the mainstream. Sure. So. I think I, I saw one of your Medium oh, posts from like 2017 or 2016, something yeah. ridiculous like that. H how can you kind of map the evolution or the growth of the NFT market? Has it taken you by surprise? Uh, just kind of walk me through your, your initial perceptions of the NFT market and how it's grown over the past market cycle or two. Um, I think because I wrote some of those articles and I mm. by no means was one of like, there were other people doing mm -hmm. stuff back then too, for sure. But sometimes when I see some of the things in the NFT world, I call it the Frankenstein effect. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know um, the story of Frankenstein, but the doctor like started making this monster and then the monster like started doing all this crazy stuff and you're like, what the fuck did I create? <laughs> so uh, sometimes I feel like that. Um, yeah, it's more than I thought. It's definitely caught on more than I thought. On the other hand, uh, I think during Rare Pepe, when that started, so that started in September 2016, and I remember the excitement people had when they were able to sell one of the Rare Pepes for like $5 mm -hmm. or $10, people went insane. Of course, the, di the you have to think 2016, the amount of people also just in Bitcoin was dynamically lower or in crypto too. So now that's dynamically higher and now also, the NFTs have gone dynamically higher, too. So I think that um, in some ways I'm surprised. In another way, I'm not, because I think there's a stronger emotional reaction mm -hmm. um, to these things. And also, you have to think, and it, so Bitcoin is mined by the network. Mm -hmm. And so there's kind of a disassociation between owning a Bitcoin, whereas if I make a creation, it's very personalized, and I sell this creation, that's like me. So that's a very unique proposition as opposed to that. So it has a very strong emotional connection. That's why it blows up so much. Mm -hmm. And are there any trends that you're looking for in this next market cycle uh, with, with NFTs, sir, any networks, any kind of artworks? Or do you just think the market is still ripe for innovation with, the, mean, with the current ar artists? There's said? definitely a lot of technical innovation still mm -hmm. going on. I think uh, Ordinal is, has, is doing a lot of atomic swaps. I mean, it's just showing you like what's possible. It's crazy, like the stuff that those guys created. You know, They have these DEXs that operate on atomic swaps, permissionless. Um, probably a lot of the people mostly doing active daily Bitcoin things in a permissionless way are probably ordinal people, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy yeah. if you think about it, you know? Yeah. So think of it what you want. Uh, that's true. And it's definitely like stress testing the network. You know, if we want, you know, so if you have like the hardcore currency argument, mm -hmm. yeah, we want people to use Bitcoin to pay coffee. What if a billion people started using Bitcoin for coffee? It would be, you'd have a similar mm. network effect. Mm. So we, this is yeah. a good test in some ways of what's going on. Also, um, as far as like you were saying with the Doge and the problem with Doganals, and they're also the the motivation from the large majority of ordinals enjoyers, Bitcoin stampers, 
counterpart people. It's also to um, try to make a way to make the transaction smaller too. Mm. And there are like technical innovations being made to lower it too. Okay, it's still not going to be lower, but they want it lower too for what but they're like, doing. Do we need do we need to inscribe like the image or just like the ownership of of the that's image? A, like that's another That's a never ending question. Like is is, that's is, is a, a great proof of work blockchain a good place for your data availability, right? I this totally is, agree. This is kind of a tough one. Right. It's a tough one, yeah. For a layer two, yes. Uh, for example, um, uh, well, we for are not for a validium, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, because if we are increasing the database uh, where we store all transactions and uh, is publicly available and shared between all nodes worldwide, uh, we see the huge uh, usage of data yeah, that is useless. So we just, need, but we just need to make the incentives such that like. Because we can't say, we, who are we to tell people what to inscribe yeah, yeah, on Bitcoin, yeah, right? So we just need to make the incentive such so that basic the spam is, d d it's very expensive to propagate, right? Yeah, okay, this there's is the that, way to, to there's handle that. You, you have to make it, so the, basically it's the argument of versus on-chain art. So that's the meme, that's the value proposition, and people really like that. Mm -hmm. That's why the order, because that is, it's, so it's, it's offering you permanence, of data storage Maybe and we can the argument GLSL shaders or I, something. I totally, I've had this. Just you know, peop, that's what people are are marketing it as, sure. and it's and it's kind of true. It's like, hey, I want my art to be the most permanent ever. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it on Bitcoin, or I'm even going to put it on Doge. You know, and that's the that's the selling point. But so the, if you want people, the more to, people that do it, the less likely it is to come to pass. The, the so problem is the, <laughs> the full node doesn't have the choice exactly to choose what that. It well, does. they do. They can prune. So it's like that's a whole thing. That's the, no, the, it's not a full node. If you prune, it's not a full node. Uh, that's a, well. Depends on what, okay, what do you if call a, a full node? They, a have every node? they have all data. If, for example, if I start a uh, node, I, have I don't know about that. If everyone from the node. It's kind of a hard time. I don't, it's I think time for zero knowledge proofs. Let's just get, let's <laughs> just prove from index. Genesis and then yes. um, to try we can do every. So I think, so without and then getting. Then we can prune and still know. I'll probably say something wrong, but I mean, you can still have like the enough. You can still prune and be a full node. That's what I would say. A full validation. Yes, exactly. So I still play back from Genesis, right? I just erase the evidence. Of all transactions? So you have... Well, other people, I can't do it again without downloading more data, right? Uh, but as so assuming wait. there wasn't a cosmic ray, right? We should so, there's, so there's even a, so there's, so there's something called Bitcoin stamps, and they're so-called unprunable because of the way that they... But that's like a debate upon itself. And then ordinals people said, no, that you can prune us. That's a feature, not a bug. So you have like a hog going, people spinning around. Like, But what's really cool is people are trying to figure out all this shit that we usually normally don't talk about that much. You know, we're not, you know before, that ha before it became an issue, it was made an issue. And we were like, okay, well, what is a full node? Do I need to run a full node? You'll have more people in ordinals or art communities running full nodes because of this, you know, experimenting. Um, so I don't even know what the question was exactly, but um, yeah, what was the question? Well, we, we, we I think <laughs> we, we, we strayed from that yeah, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, yeah. I think you were responding think, to one of his questions, I think that right? You can prune and be a full node. Yeah. But but we all agree that like uh, the harder it is to run a Bitcoin full node, the fewer Bitcoin full nodes there will be, and potentially the less secure the network. That's an interesting there's proposition. Like, there's like some there's some like relationship there. Um, could could be. I'm not sure if that's actually what's happened, though. I mean, I would, we would seem, it I would think seem I would, that, I, right? I, I, the only reason why I've spun up multiple Bitcoin full nodes in recent days was because of ordinals indexers, by the way. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm a pro ordinals person. Yeah. Um, but uh, I definitely think there's something to be said about, like, if it gets too unwieldy, maybe maybe there there will be, like, actual limitations. Do you actually need to store the, the image? Don't you need only a uh, verification that the image is it's like uh, maybe the that should exist on IPFS and we should store the hash on, on Bitcoin? No, no, I'm, right. not, I'm not totally against it. I've made lots of things look that For like sure. in a similar way. I think this so is basically, the Ethereum way of doing it. So basically, it, right? oh, essentially, yeah. So uh, basically, you just have to make it cool to use L2 or some other interesting storage mechanism for the NFTs. Right now, it's not cool. I got to build a narrative around so it. So we have, yeah, you have you to build a narrative around it to make it cool mm -hmm. to store the images on, I mean, there's this thing, Arrowweave, but that's like weird too, or if it's stored on rootstock, or I don't know where you want to store it. 
you know, but it has to be somehow cool and it has to be some proposition of permanence of a similar value as um, one of the net proof of work networks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we've mentioned uh, uses of currency a few times now, and you know, the economist in me really wants to talk about that a little bit more. How far away do you, do you guys think we are in terms of whether it's using Bitcoin as an actual currency or Doge? I say this because you know El Salvador has launched a big initiative, and I think they recently admitted that you know what Bitcoin uptake as a payment system hasn't really caught on. How far away do you, do you guys think we are to actually using Doge as a currency, Bitcoin as a currency? I know there's a lot of tax implications to that yes. as well, but kind of just kind of walk me through your thoughts on that. I think uh, there is a long path away because mm -hmm. uh, the government still don't accept as a, an exchange currency. Mm -hmm. um, if they start to, um, to accept as a currency that we can, for example, pay taxes mm -hmm. directly in, in crypt cryptocurrency in Doge or Bitcoin, yes, there will be um, a global adoption. Until then, I don't believe it. I only believe that people will experiment, uh, accept for example, tips in our case, they were trying to, um, to make people to start accepting tips in Doge, mm -hmm. not accepting and, and selling things in Doge, because um, uh, even in Bitcoin, I, I don't think it makes sense for now, mm -hmm. uh, because it's really difficult, because everyone has to exchange for fiat money, mm -hmm. and, and they have to declare and pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't see, um, I see a long path away. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the state of Louisiana accept? Bitcoin for payment for government services? Wasn't there like a big... Because Twitter that's thing? why Bitcoin was invented, right? To pay taxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. That's exact, yeah, I totally agree. I love it. Yeah, I don't... I don't. I mean, I'm not... I, I, like I said it's earlier, so I kind of think that people like, f you know, um, like really appealing to the nation, nation state things are like the same people that go to a strip club and think yeah. that a stripper will f is in love with them. Like, yeah, but Angel loves me. Um, she pretty... But like, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> like, uh, the question is, uh, will it be used as a currency? It needs to be in the parallel society mm -hmm. used as a currency first. Because if it's so cool, mm -hmm. then it's so cool that the government is forced to adapt it. And like maybe in the case of El Salvador or other currencies, I mean, they're like a challenge to the dollar. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, we want to have something separate from the dollar. That's a clear reason to do it. And the other clear reason is there's so much of a parallel society using it that we're forced to use it as well, as far as like nation states using. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you want to get it used, we have to have something cool enough to use it for, mm -hmm. whether that's JPEGs, whether that's drugs, whether that's uh, really cool services that you yeah. only accept that for. Yeah, and do you think, yeah, go ahead. So when you ask the question, how far are we from mass adoption, mm -hmm. you're just triggering the individual within myself, and mm -hmm. I'm asking myself, how many times have I actually used this for payment? Mm -hmm. Because if we're not starting the economy ourselves and we're not using it for payments and we're holding speculatively, assuming that others will build this mm -hmm. medium of exchange function, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. We're just hoarding our little Pokemon cards, which are digital. Yeah. Because honestly, we don't have much privacy and, here. And no one has tools to yeah. accept easily accept payments in Doge. Uh, or in Bitcoin. You can uh, for, uh, BTC pay for example, I have a store. How yeah. can I start accepting Bitcoin right now? Like Square? No, no, no. no. I have to contact a third party? Yeah. No. yeah. yeah. You can use BTC Pay. You can use LMBit. Is it easy to, to use? Can I plug in and that's it? It's easy yes. as it? And I'm I, like I try it. Most CMSs and have integrations for some kind of like Bitcoin payment gateway, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's like, this exists. It's just... It takes a while to get yeah. finality, right? Yeah. The learning so curve is, is really big. And then yeah. What if we can just plug a simple box and start accepting payments? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what we in, in the Dogecoin Foundation are doing. Yeah. We are building um, a software that anyone can build in uh, their own hardware uh, and can plug in and a simple click, start a, uh, running a node, accepting payments without any knowledge yeah. in every language. Well, as, as Vlad mentioned, we're kind of in a speculative phase right now where we're sitting back waiting for someone to build that system. What do you think about the growth of the ETF world then? Like that's basically continuing to monetize and financialize Bitcoin as an asset as opposed to, or can it be both, right? But right now it seems like it's going definitely in one way. 
And as you mentioned, uh, mm. at the, the Bitcoin Nashville conference, which I was there, was absolutely nuts. People, as you mentioned, jizzing in their pants <laughs> over Donald Trump, which <laughs> yeah. is I mean, an absolutely... The Nashville one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was, was absolutely yeah, yeah. wild yeah, yeah. to see that. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clearly, it's clearly a transactional thing for him. He doesn't care about Bitcoin or doesn't yeah. care about... I have to admit that my pants got a little bit... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you think about your bags <laughs> and the <laughs> fact <laughs> that my bags are going to pump and the Black Rock buying the dip, right? But but do you think, like, is this... I mean, is what are your thoughts on, on Bitcoin becoming increasingly financialized in this way? And, and, and does that kind of lend to actually Look, building up this? Both sides need each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean, like need is maybe, maybe not the right word, but I mean, you can't stop it. Yeah. So, okay, you have the ETF people here. And if, you're, if you think that's not good, well, then make something really cool that yeah. is not that. Yeah. You, uh, you know, that's what, what do you want to do? You want to like uh, break their windows and be like, no, you can't have Bitcoin. I mean, you know, what, what, Scrub the ETF from what the are earth. you going to do? You know, I mean, you yeah. could voice your concerns. You can uh, build businesses and make pepes or whatever it is you think that is not that use case yeah. and and do it. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, people markets will find a way to make money where there's a way to make money, mm -hmm. you know, and that's. We should be clear, that's what they're driven. They're not ideologically driven. Yeah. That's yeah. clearly, you know. Bitcoin isn't good, a really good on, way on to the, pay for coffee, though. On the other right? hand, on the other hand, there's like, there's the actually, benefit, is that really the, I the plus of the ETF people is that, you know, maybe there is some intermingling of ideology. You know, maybe they do stumble across like, hey, what is this Bitcoin thing? You know, why are people so interested in it? It's not a stock. It's not a bond. It's not real estate. You know, because they're looking at it from asset, and, and there's going to be a percentage of people that do get like a, you know the bu the ideological bug, whatever variation of that, or maybe they get into NFTs. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think we do have that uh, effect some, but um, yeah, that's the positive effect of it. I think. Excellent. Well, I think we have less than five minutes left, so I think we'll just open the floor to any questions, okay. comments. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> go, Jameson. I'm interested to know uh, if you believe that uh, ordinals, non-monetary uh, uses of Bitcoin, whatever they may be, have uh, effectively raised the floor on the block space market such that we will never see empty blocks again. Uh, well, I mean, the amount of transactions in a block depends on the miner. And so, like we've seen in the past, uh, I will mine an empty block because that's the right given to me by the Bitcoin protocol. So it really just depends on that's one as far as empty blocks. So Ocean maybe will have some empty blocks. I yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm monitoring uh, the blockchain from time to time and the uh, one megabit um, uh, limit on the Dogecoin. Uh, not always uh, have full blocks. Only when there is hype, full blocks uh, starts to increase, um, but we can see it that um, in the last year, yes, increased a lot, full blocks. I think the probably, you're right, probably won't see empty blocks. Another way of saying it is we'll never see an empty Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know what you meant. But yeah, I think, I think yeah, probably not, because there's so many people interested. Um, I think, so this summer, we saw uh, pretty low fees, maybe you guys noticed. And there was not a lot of ordinal activity. You see that sometimes in the summer, but I think now they're up a little bit. But it still was not completely empty. There was always a backlog. Yeah. When was the last empty block that wasn't due to like filtering? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Depends on yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Earlier, that um, basically make it cool where to store the art, and I'm just wondering, and that's kind of a prevalent idea in a lot of, of cryptocurrency spaces. But I'm kind of thinking, isn't that putting uh, something basically putting it the wrong way around? Because as just the general user, not something in any way interested in cryptocurrency, why would I care where it's stored? I care about the ultimate functionality that I derive from it. So, uh, isn't that the, the more important question, and isn't, shouldn't that be driving how we store it and how we uh, how we build these things? But it's just cool, right? It's, so basically, the novel it's 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 not doing any utility, anyways, right? 
So I just like responded to a tweet the other day. The guy said, my ultimate uh, ordinal, uh, like uh, um, on-chain, um, uh, so many uh, recursive, um, mind, uh, ordinal, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Satoshi, uh, so-and-so, special Satoshi, so-and-so. And I said, oh, because I guess it's about the art. Because he just named like 10 technical things. I was like, we don't even know what it looks like. You don't care. It's just collector jibber-jabber, technical blah-blah. You see what I mean? So that would appeal to some. And some people, like you said, uh, they might not give a shit about like, oh, what Satoshi is it minted on, whatever. They just care how it looks. They don't even give a shit where it's stored. So I'll tell you a really fun story. Uh, Rare Pepe Nakamoto card. So it points to a, to a image somewhere in the web. The web link is broken, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And it's recently been sold for over $200,000 with this broken web link. People don't give Whoa. a shit because there's a consensus of what this thing is. That's so cool. Yeah, can yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree yeah. with you on, but, but that's, again, this is still kind of within the bubble. Like, when I was 16, I was happy to do 24 hours emerge in this new world for Gentoo and installing Gentoo, which is Linux, which is Linux version, which just was the most nerdiest thing you could do, like, in the early 2000s. And, um, but that's still within our bubble where these people are going. If you were to go to sell to, to an art gallery or someone, they wouldn't act so, like that. So what the, okay. There so was an auction though, right? So, so there, like some NFTs, so there's, like Christie's so or Sotheby's or something. Exactly, like there's definitely is big action in Sotheby's and all of the big art houses. And they're more like on the art side, less of the collectible, but they still have some of that too. So again, to be honest, it's just narrative. Okay, so they get someone that comes in there and it's like, yeah, on-chain art is the cool thing. They'll be doing on-chain. Why don't you on use BFS to oh, start yeah. it? Uh, well, and then the other one, it's just like it doesn't matter about the technicals of the on-chain. It matters who the artist is. It just depends on that narrative. Why don't you use IPFS? Because it's not permanent. Because you, you have uh, to. The, the same uh, with the blockchain. If, uh, for example, all nodes disconnect at the same time, or there is no internet. Okay. I mean, it's just about. It's, 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 it's just the likelihood. Degrees, right? It's just yeah. the likelihood. Degrees, degrees. It's just the likelihood, and it's just a mark. To be honest, it's part of a marketing narrative. You have to say, "Hey, it's on Bitcoin. It's permanent forever." That's what people say. Well, we don't know that, but that's what they say. You know, they, they as don't long know, as they Bitcoin don't know, doesn't die, though, we're probably basically gonna, you're uh, betting on that, and they don't know about the availability of that image yeah. because right now they're not parsing it from a node; they're parsing it from some web thing. You know what I mean? Like yes. nobody of the none of these uh, ordinal explorers are actually getting the image from the node. They just have a, Im a web image of it. That Why don't they have only the ash, no. and don't care about the uh, the original asset? Hey, well, make so it we did make it a, like you know, a fun explorer that actually hits like I think it's like the Electors API, you so you can I'll inscribe I'll purely I'll using like these like full history node I APIs and then view it as such. It takes too long. I though, think right? one you observation is because um, it's a standard thing in marketing. If you piss off a lot of people, then you get a lot of traction. No. You know, and it's just a thing we have to deal with somehow as humans. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's part of the whole thing. Yeah. On that note, we're out of time. Thanks everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.